it's time for the visit with a person of high strangeness. Um, early in the year, um, one of my grandchildren had located a liquor store and uh, she was going to uh, ask me how come they were privately owned liquor stores, of course I didn't have a clue. And so uh, she su actually was Ebony, she suggested I go and investigate that and I did do that. And so the name of today's show is Vices and um, so we packed up the car and we went up there and we talked to the gentleman because we, he again we didn't know how uh, this was going to work and um, as it turned out Miss Gregoire, God bless her, um, she always when she runs out of money she always figures out some kind of way to either penalize uh, she always penalizes somebody for something and uh, I guess in her way of raising money she decided to get some um, privately owned liquor store. Sounds really good, wonderful things. You can go in there and you buy all kinds of things. We didn't concentrate on the liquor of course and uh, we just wanted to know why that was. So we did this interview and we partially got to the bottom of it and of course when I called the agencies to find out um, how this really worked, uh, nobody seemed to at this point know why. But from everything that I gather is that privately liquor stores make more money for the state than um, you know if they come to the state because even privately owned stores are regulated by the, um, the liquor board and then they decide what it is we can buy and what we can drink and so on and so on. Well anyway it was wonderful that this gentleman came and was all excited about his new place and uh, so we had this conversation and of course when I went to Costco's and they wanted me to sign the petition um, I did not because uh, something just didn't ring right compared to what I had just talked to the gentleman about. And so hey I want you to have a visual here so let's go um, to one of I believe at the moment six privately owned liquor stores and from what I understand they will be uh, more springing up uh, pretty much everywhere. So come along and we'll see what they have. Privately owned liquors. Yeah. And, and so we'll start you out with a cranberry twist. Silver bottles. And owls. A giant tattoo. Three goose, three, four, four, three, three. Marilyn Monroe. Vintage car sets. Hot chips to make you good and thirsty. In case you're wondering why it's all the screen stuff. Hey, it is St. Patrick's Day. Shot glasses. Silver set of Jägermeister glasses. A lot of things is vintage, old. Yeah. Here's the owner. My name is Gordon Boyd. Gordon Boyd. And we're here at Rainier Park Liquor and Beverage mm -hmm. off of Yelm Highway. And it's a privately run liquor store. Uh, the prices are all the same, mm -hmm. but I can carry other items like uh, I have chips and salsa and beer mm -hmm. and mixers and um, a good selection of, of shot glasses and decanters. Pretty stuff. So, so tell me, you woke up one morning, you say, when you was a little boy and you said, I'm going to own a liquor store, or how did that come about? Um, no, I was a school teacher for 24 years and oh, had wow. a restaurant for a couple years mm -hmm. and um, heard about this opening and I applied and luckily... Mm -hmm. I got this, so. Well, I've been in Washington State 40 years, and uh, actually my granddaughter uh, had been here, and that's how I knew about you, so it's working good for you? Yeah, and um, yeah, I heard Chris Gray would like to open 10 more of these privately mm -hmm. run stores, so uh, yeah, I'm getting the word out, I'm doing more advertising, and uh, every mm -hmm. day new customers are coming in and just mm -hmm. finding out about us, so. Yeah. Meeting a lot of new people? Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah, quite a few people I've met through here. And 
and, yeah. and you a local person? No. Yeah, I was born right here in Olympia. Yeah, a lot of us kind of came from other places. Right. But we are Olympians now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, now yeah. we're born right here, and mm -hmm. it's you, changed a lot. So. And how long have you been here? We've been here almost five months. Five months? Oh, yes. well. So, and we're just off the Yelm Highway by the McDonald's and mm -hmm. QFC, so come yeah. on in and see us and uh cool and i'll i'll show them some more pretties and thank you for being so um generous with hey, me thank you mm -hmm. thank you cranberry juice and then here's a display from the garlic lady um uh, that's one thing i would not have expected to see, to see in a store like that A, a different mixes, a drink mixes, and all it organic, I'm sure. Cooking shoes. Red hibiscus. Cocktail mix. And a crystal skull. Faceless ladies. Thank you. Buckets and that's it. That's pretty cool, huh? I'm hanging on to the door here. Uh, wine is good for you. I, I, I'm a non-drinker, but doesn't matter. And so um, I'm just gonna hang here for a minute. Now, one of the other things Miss Gregoire is always uh, really excited about is our smoking issue. And um, then this somebody had enough sense to give us some different choices now i smoked for 50 years and uh huh and it's getting harder and harder to uh you know take care of that vice if you want to call it that and um because some of us actually smoke uh, to ground ourselves it gives us a, a clear head if you will uh, so there are many reasons why people, you know, smoke. And so uh, I had seen, I had heard and s heard about this, and I had seen it, and um, so I couldn't understand how this works, but I'd like for you to know it does. And so our next stop is going to be uh, the West. Ah, what's the name of the mall? Anyway, we're going to go to the mall and talk to uh, the people there that, uh, sell these genius electronic or computer cigarettes that do not come under the tobacco law, by the way. And um, so I'm going to show you those. And that's another way to work around um, the high prices of some of our vices. Yeah, today we have the Westfield Mall. And... Uh, I bought some uh, electronic cigarettes the other day and I was so impressed with it. So we got permission to uh, show you how this works. And your name, dear? My name is Tom. Tom. And you do work for the vendor here? I do. Okay. Now, you said you'd be nice enough to show us how this works? I will. Okay, hang on. Now what this is, is an electronic cigarette. This is a rechargeable battery. There's a vaporizer, atomizer here, and then in the filter, it's just nicotine and water. There's no tar, there's no tobacco, there's no chemicals or carcinogens. It doesn't cause lung cancer, and there's no secondhand smoke, so it's completely illegal to smoke inside, around people, anywhere you want. What it does, you just put the filter on the vaporizer, and when you inhale, the vaporizer heats up, heats up the nicotine in the water, turns it into a water vapor, and allows you to inhale it in a safe, non-harmful way. You see it lights up, so uh, for those of you with psychological problems that can quit smoking, uh, you just you just um, get used to, uh, there's a difference in the, what is, what is, tactile having in your hand. and after, you, hey, uh, if that works, now I understand it comes in chocolate. Um, we do have flavors that you can order online. Mm -hmm. Here at the kiosk, the only thing we carry is regular and menthol flavors. Uh-huh. And have you noticed the, um, I know a lot of people are uh, kind of 
retaliating about the high tax prices? Is, uh, what is the reason people give you for coming here rather than a smoke shop? Most of it is because <laughs> cigarettes are way too expensive now to afford for people, so they come in here as a cheaper alternative, but a lot of people will also come in because it's a lot healthier. It, and they want to quit smoking? And they want to quit smoking, exactly. Okay, so on a 1 to 10, what's the success rate, you think? Um, our success rate is about 10% higher than with the patch of the pill, so it's about a 78% success rate. Uh-huh. Well, that's pretty cool. I, I really like it, and uh, I've, I've smoked for 50 years, but I retaliated against the price increase, and yep. that's why I came this way. You work here long? Um, I have worked here. I worked here since last year, and then recently left to go to another job, but I left that job and I came back here. So how long um, how long has this been in existence, do you know? Um, I believe the company itself has been in existence for about two years now, uh -huh. but it didn't really start the market to start selling until about a year ago. Yeah. And so you're pretty pleased with the results? I am very pleased. You smoke it yourself? Um, I smoked about two packs a day and now I'm down to maybe five or six cigarettes a week. Oh my! So thank you very much. I'm going to take a picture of your place here. And um, we just went to privatized liquor store before we came here. So, And uh, thank you very much. This is what I call the little computer device. Then this is the battery. Now it's plugged into the wall. And it's being charged. Vice is pay bills, uh, as we know, and uh, we're still doing our part. and. Uh, Maybe not at the rate uh, as we are expected to. And we have a couple of dollars left over to go to other places. And uh, some people, their advice is to take a trip. Now, if you stop and think about it, um, we have a lot of tourists. We have, uh, we have um, uh, cruise ships. We have people that come visit private parties. They come to Seattle. They come to ball games from all over the place. And in a lot of places, uh, People don't understand why we are so regulated when it comes to uh, things that we can do by freedom of choice. And um, so one of the friends actually went to Stonehenge in England and filmed that for us. Now I would like for you to know it was raining. The um, it was windy. So when she talks. Uh, you can't really hear what she says, but that it doesn't matter because that's not the point of the whole thing. The point is so we can see, um, we can go somewhere and take a couple of those dollars we just, uh, we're not paying uh, and doing something with it. Besides that, if you notice, almost everybody there smoke. And um, so it doesn't matter what she is talking about. So just come along and enjoy the places that she looked at and there's lots of languages and of course we wouldn't have been able to uh, translate it for you anyway. So come along with my friend on one of her vices which is travel and um, she had pay a lot of taxes for that too. Welcome to Stonehenge. We're right now in the parking lot before we get into Stonehenge. Lovely, lovely countryside here. Quite a few tourists and buses. There are other places to visit here. If you take a look at maps. You'll see there are very many old sites. Just north of Stonehenge is Woodhenge, a Neolithic ceremonial monument.
just north is a ruin for Norman Church, a Neolithic art work, and an old 14th century castle just to the west. The Hotspur River goes up to the end. If you look just past the parking lot here, there's some mounds. You can see the trail. The trail. The people are taking a walk up there. These mounds look like large versions of our minor mounds we have. People are standing on it. Have to go out there. There we have another one. Put the zoom on it. I don't know if we can go out there. Again, the rest of the countryside. Now, Stonehead is actually across behind me, across the field. So we're going to walk over there. Right now. Now, to get to the other side of the freeway, we're going to walk underneath this tunnel. So I want to show you some stones up close. Here we wait in line. Pay to get in. Sunday afternoon about 3 p.m. This is the tunnel that we're going to go under the freeway. And if you look at the very end, there's a little painting. Okay, we're coming out of the tunnel, and there we are. First side of Stonehead. Jordan. No. Quite a few people here. As you can see. Now all around Stonehenge is a burrow. Ditch. You can see that. Circles around. Sometimes they have a little offshoot. Yeah, a little closer. And there's a crow on top. Guarding. See how old they are. Crow. Hello, Crow. What do you see up there? This is called the Station Stone. No, Stonehead is directly behind me. And this is on the west side, and directly on the other side, parallel to the stone, is another station stone. Mm -hmm. 
again we are on the west side Smaller stones we're doing. <laughs> now, all around Stonehenge is a path that circles it. We need to stay on. <laughs> they say there are two types of stones here. The inner stones are the blue stone, which we believe came from Wales. You see that Thoreau continues to go around. And if you look closely, you'll see the Russia on a Sunday. Hmm. Now I want to show you the other station stone. Remember, the first one was directly across on the other side of the circle. And then just beyond that, they have what they call slaughter stone. What I want to show you. So it's getting late in the day. The sun is starting to set. I think you've just changed to And it is cold. But thank goodness it's not raining. So I think I'm gonna head on out to my next stop. This is the little town of Ainsbury. Well, we, I stayed last night, and this is the inn I stayed in. It's a cute little town. And that's the pub that I met with. I had a couple of drinks with some old men last night. Even a copper. That's a cop. So, this is a typical little English town. And it's now time to move on. Now, Ainsbury is located just a few miles south of Stonehenge. And here's an old, old church in Ainsbury. And there's an old cemetery there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drive down this road and go over the River Avon. So, driving on the left-hand side of the road, I needed to pull over for this lorry here. another. And here I go. Currently we're in Buckingham, a little town that you're staying at while we're working here. Just one angle by the street car. And the name of this road is which explains to me why I see all these school kids coming down the road. I'm going to walk through the town for a bit so you can get an idea of a typical English little community. This is the outskirts of town. I'm kind of in the back alley part.
Here's another shot of the hotel I'm staying at. Very nice hotel, indeed. Good ears. Way behind me is the church. Another shot of the church from Seti. village. Square during rush hour. And that over there is the Oval Jail. And here is my very posh room that the company has put me up in. Very elegant, wouldn't you say? Huh. That's footage. <laughs> ah, that's footage. Had some problems, but <laughs> we cleaned it up as much as we could, and um. So, so you see, different people do th different things to, to relax or to think or to get in touch with their spiritual self or whatever. So then in 2005, um, the same lady had, um, her and her mother had went to, had planned a trip to Poland and I'm stuttering, I don't even know why. You see, I'm not smoking, I can't think. Um, they had planned a trip to Poland and when their travel time came around by coincidence um, the Pope had died and so they were celebrating uh, celebrating them memorializing uh, the, the Pope so they had the um, the memorial in Poland 
uh, for the Pope because he was a polar national. And uh, what, st what struck me and what kind of came to me was when you have, regardless of what we do, good, bad, or indifferent, there comes a time when patriotism um, takes over and we all do the same thing. And it was so, it's so wonderful. Uh, this next clip we're getting ready to uh, show you, we're going to take you to Warsaw and we're also going to take you to um, the place where the Pope was born, uh, Krakow. And uh, when you notice the people, everything's quiet, nobody's doing anything that anybody could consider a vice, you know. And you can hear the music in the streets, you can see the candles in the streets, and it seems like the whole country at that point um, stopped everything. The stores are closed, and um, it's time for reflection and mourning and things like that. And uh, I thought we would work that in here for you because it, it shows me that there's a time for everything. And uh, that was just a time to um, be in unity and do things very subdued. And it's a uh, pretty good footage, so if I may say so myself. And, uh, so we're going to take you to Poland, to the uh, memorial of um, the Pope, okay? By the hotel window in Warsaw right now, and you can hear the man talking. It's a priest with a huge mask going on right across the street from us, which is actually behind me. This is a view of a window at night. You can hear the singing. People holding candles right there. Looking out the window at the mass that's going on simultaneously with the funeral. Well, you know, you know. The Pope's burial in Warsaw. Old Town, Old Town. 
down to the war. There's a speedway down here. We're heading for the local police. Part of the old town. They say the most beautiful sight of the town is from this building because you can't see it.
here. This person is getting water because he's here peeling. up in the Tarkata Mountains and looking out the balcony of the rumor renting out of his home. And I'm just looking around. If you look over here, you still see the snow on the ground. We're going to go for a walk. This is our room. Here, it's all pine. Very small room in Yankee. Where we stayed in Saka Pana. Red, green, brick. The sun really disappeared and it really is raining now. Uh, wasn't it wonderful how the um, the people were all in unison and how they did these things? And so now we're going back to our vices uh, because we're getting all lively again. We're going to fly to Amsterdam to the red light district. Uh, it's really shaky in some places. That's because there's so many lights and they're all moving um uh, what do you call these? Uh, neon lights and things like that. So it looks like it's really busy, but that's what the streets look like. So if you want to go to a place where you can virtually do do anything, um, Amsterdam's the place to go. So we're gonna fly in there and take a really quick peep, and then fly right back out. Okay. So let's go to Amsterdam.
Thank you. It's the 1st of July today. I was watching the news and they had a segment on uh, on people that live beyond 100. And one of the things they were talking about, they, they interviewed some of the old people and wanted to know what uh, what they did to live so long. And it was a couple of ladies, they said, live fast and drink good liquor. <laughs> so I had to laugh, so I thought that fit right in here. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. The economy is really messed up at the moment. We we understand that. And creative people, uh, musicians, uh, keep saying ah, oh, but there's just such a such a vast population of people that um, that enjoy things occasionally, and these syntaxes are just too much for some of us. So it's not that we don't want to uh, have the parks and the and the teachers and all of that. We're just smoking as fast as we can. Some people drink as much as they can and we just can't do anymore. So the next time when we ask to uh, sign the petition, um, maybe we'd like to think about the people involved and how it affects them. And um, vices are, I don't even know why they use that word vices because Sometimes that's just people's life, um, and uh, we, we 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 would really like to, uh, in a non-judgmental way, um, be treated like we do have the freedom of choice. If if you know, uh, drunken driving is wrong, um, blowing smoke in your face is wrong, and most people are really really more. Uh, responsible they're not and so um, I think Stonehenge really fit into that because it gives us time to think and reflect and see who we are and uh, get away from the stress that we call our everyday life and so in a way I hope you enjoyed today's vices I don't know how I am for time if I have some time over we go to we're gonna go dancing for a minute or two but, um, so please look at, at the petitions and see what it is, what it entails. And I so thank the wizard, the computer wizard that thought about making electronic cigarettes. So people say, what are you going to do today? Well, I'm going to go home and smoke a computer chip. <laughs> oh, I hope this show was as much fun for you as it was for me. And, um. Uh, Next week, what are we going to do next week? Next week, uh, we're going to talk about UFOs. How about that? And then uh, I hope you have a wonderful summer. And whatever you do, please be responsible. Okay? And we'll see you next week. I just spotted a spider, so I'm going to hightail out of here. And I'll see you next week. Bye.
on the new version of Lillian Miss Lillian. It's part of why I plan it still. And if you do, I plan it up. 
Well, you took us here. 